hello guys and welcome in this new video in the game engine series hope you guys are doing good hope you guys are healthy so now in the previous video we talked about uh, how i managed to create the player and make it being able to shoot as you can see right here so we created a class for gun and uh, we implemented the shooting the idea was to generate particle which in this case are gonna be uh, bullets so we simply generate particle and make them move that was the idea of the previous video so if you're watching this for the first time and you want to learn more about building games in c++ using the sdl library then uh, this is the right place for you so we have the link in the description below with the playlist and you'll be able to actually see a lot more than just this video that you're watching right now so the idea is to build a code base for you that you could use to create all kind of game so your limit will only be your ideas so the idea is not just to create a game but to create a code base that would be reused to create more games now in this video we're gonna be talking about timers because you know you often want in your game to be able to have some object moving along like a moving platform for example you want your player to wait for a platform to move to move from from the side and come and the, the player will jump over that platform and the platform will bring the, the player on the side right here so all this can be managed using timers and sdl actually offers a built-in timer system that we can simply use to create our own timer in our games and it's a good idea and yeah i think it's important to actually know how to do that and to kind of use that and that's what we're going to be doing in this video so before we get started i first of all want to invite you guys to subscribe to medica channel like this video and share with your friends and i also want to mention that you can get the source code of this project with the link in the description below uh, on my patreon page and I, I have to be transparent with you you have to be a patron to actually access that but if you become a patron you'll be able to actually download the source code for free and you'll also be able to share your idea with me and impact on the content that i am uploading so simply invite you to go and support me out so thank you let's get started So as you can see right here on the screen, uh, since I started this video, there's this text which is actually being printed out uh, every two seconds. That's that's actually the idea of that timer that we're gonna be actually using. So I just decided to use just to print the text because I didn't want to spend too much time. I didn't have, have that much time to kind of build something in the game that would be moving. So I just decided, okay, I'll, I'm going to build like something like this. but. It would really it would actually be simple to implement something custom to you like I could have moved this cloud using that but you know that's not a point so yes now how did I implement it that the first thing we need to do is to kind of initialize our um, timer system from SDL but normally if you don't do this it will still work but I think it's a good idea to actually do this because I don't know sometimes this could be required so always make sure you initialize that and always make sure you initialize the system in SDL when you want to use it and I don't recommend to simply initialize everything because this will be a lot of system initialized in the background that you're not using that's why I make sure I only initialize those systems that I'm using so that's why I decided to initialize the timer only if I have an instance of timer somewhere in my code only in that case I want to initialize the timer but if I don't have any timer somewhere so I don't want to use that and for those of you watching this for the first time this class has already been created from another video so this video is just to add something on top of that so we talked about delta time and yeah we created this time this class when we were talking about the delta time so these things right here don't care about so if i don't speak about something then you don't have to care about that so we initialize our class and um let me go to the uh, header file now we only have these three methods right here which are important for us but before we get to that i need to show you first of all some type that i have up here 
I didn't want to write SDL timer ID all the time. So I decided to say, okay, instead of using this, I'm going to be using timer ID and also the callback for the timer. I simply decided to call it T, you know, underscore callback, but you don't have to do this. You could simply go out and use these names. So down here, we have this function. We have this member variable that has been added. We have the timer registry. It's a vector. It's an array which is going to be storing all our timer um, object that we will create. So every time we create a new timer, we want to register that. We want to make sure we register that because in SDL, when you define a timer, you also have to destroy it. And that's important to know that you have to destroy it. And yeah, the idea is just to register each timer in this vector so that later when I close the program without destroying the timer, then I simply call my clean function right here and he will do the job for me. That's why that's the idea about that. So you can see the clean function is already explained. So we simply check if this component, uh, we simply check each uh, IDs in the vector in the registry and we remove them. Now, normally this guy right here should have been uh, removing. Um, I should actually search for this ID in the vector and remove it. So, because if I simply destroy this ID right here, it won't be removed from my vector right here, even though it will be remo removed when I clean the function. It will still work, so nothing is wrong right now, so there is no problem. Just to keep in mind that you have to, if you want to remove a timer while running the program, because it will sometimes happen that you want a timer to only run once and you want to destroy it. So you, in that case, you, you want to make sure you kind of delete that from your uh, timer registry by using using this function right here and calling the SDL remove should be called on the fact that we check if that ID is inside this registry right here, then we remove it. But for now, just keep it like that for the sake of this video. Now we have this start timer right here. So one thing you have to know about SDL is you can just define your timer as you want. You can just define the timer callback as you want. This cannot be, you know, uh, any random uh, function that you have to use if you want to call as a callback. It has to. It has a blueprint that you have to respect in order for you to use SDL timers. So I created this method right here, which simply returns a timer ID, and it starts. It actually starts a timer, and you know run whatever has been given by the callback right here as function now and we simply call the sdl add timer function so this is a simple function from sdl and uh, the parameter it takes the first one is going to be the interval so how long do you want the computer to wait till he calls the callback function to do your job for you so this is the interval the second argument is going to be the callback function that you want the call so this is like the callback function I'm coming to that how to define that in a couple of seconds and the third argument is going to be you know of this type right here void because this could be all kind of object this could be a string a number a text or whatever so that's why they actually define this with a type void with a pointer void the pointer void can actually point on all kind of object so that's why the data could be everything here. So you're not restricted to use only one type of data. You can even define your own type of data that has to be given. And this will be, in your case, easy to do. Create a structure or a class or whatever. So, and every time we add a timer, we want to register that timer in our timer registry to keep track on that. That's really important. So. This is basically how our, our timer class is working. Now we want to actually use this, how to actually implement a callback function. And uh, yeah, now I got, I have to go, you could open all kinds of files. You don't have to have a huge project like this to actually test that. You can simply create a simple project to test and see how it's working and you could then implement that in your project. So um, I have this method right here, which I've defined, you can see, it returns this um, unsigned integer uh, to, to bit. And if you remember, um, I talked about the fact that, so you can see right here, the interval of this function, if you if I want to remove this and show you, the SDL, the SDL 8, int, uh, 8 timer, you see, this is also uh, unsigned integer for it to bit. 
you see that's that's the reason why I actually have the same type because it takes that type so I just kind of want to define that same type and yeah this function has to be like this that's the reason why this callback is like this so it, 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 it will always return an unsigned integer and it also has to be like this so it takes an unsigned integer as first parameter and the data that you want to pass through uh, to call your your callback function so and what I already I do here is just I just render I just kind of print out this text on the screen and when I run this uh, I didn't show you first of all how I call this right here yeah let me kind of close this first so and you can see right here we have I can create a timer like this I will simply say timer instance start timer I give two seconds so it's it's in milliseconds so you have to know that it's in milliseconds and I also call the move I give the callback function call move and you can see I simply pass like a text say which says yes and that's why I do this type case right here if you don't do this you will simply print the address that is given from this you know that's why you need to you know kind of um, type case this in the type that you want to use and then you will be able to actually access that so and when you do this this will simply do the job for you so it will always run and you see the text each two seconds is going to be coming out so don't mind this grid right here I'm actually working on building grids and uh, this was just simple showcase so if you want to know how to do a grid in SDL, so maybe you should write down, but don't mind that. So in, as you can see, every two seconds. Now, there is a question. I'm pretty sure there is a question coming in your mind. How can I make this run only once? So how can I actually make this run only once, not forever in my program? Because sometimes you want something to happen only once and then stop. So now the way you can do that, instead of returning I didn't talk about the fact that I return interval right here that's exactly the reason why he will keep running each two seconds so if you want it to only run once you simply have to put zero right here because the idea is this timer is gonna be referencing itself every time as long as you return a value different from zero here he will always call himself back so when you when you create a timer for the first time and when you re return this interval right here which is different from zero he will recreate himself every time this function returns its interval and you can actually return another value if you want so you can start your timer with a value of three seconds and then change it to something like one second depending on your task and what you actually want to do and that's the idea so if I run this right now we will simply run once and that will be it so Tuck, we got it and that's all nothing is coming anymore and you can see that's exactly what you want sometimes for some things you want that something happen on the end and one thing I didn't show is to destroy the timer if I destroy the timer directly here it will just destroy it it won't work so that's why I also need to make sure my timer had has at least an, enough time to achieve you know the goal that I set from him for him so because if I just kind of call it right here it will simply you know burned out but you can actually keep track on this by doing something like this you want to set for example a variable maybe that's just an idea I haven't done that um, on your timer so you have like a timer that you create a class and you have a variable that is gonna be updated to uh, done something like that so done and then you simply go and loop through and if the if the timer is done you simply destroy that you could do it that way but in my case I also made sure that my clean function would will always destroy all the timers that I have left because there are some timers that are gonna be running forever without you having to destroy them uh, during the game process that's why you need to make sure if you close the program without destroying them you have to clean and the clean function is simply called uh, I think in the engine um, yeah I think here yeah timer instance and then we simply clean it right here and we make sure that all timer are destroyed and our memory is released yeah 
so that's basically all i wanted to show you in this video and um, as i always say if you guys have any question any concern if there is anything i haven't explained well you know this isn't easy so just kind of leave a comment down there and i'll kind of try to answer that and i also want to mention again that you guys can go out and support my work on patreon it really means a lot for me and uh, yeah stay blessed and ciao